Have you ever heard of a coin made out of a Soviet nuclear missile? Well, we're gonna get into the history of these and also find out if these are bulletproof. Today we have this 1988 disarmament dollar. Viewers, Chris and RJ, who run an eBay store that actually sell these coins, were curious if these would be bulletproof or if you prefer, bullet resistant. These souvenir coins were purportedly minted from R-12 missiles seen here that were scrapped by the 1987 INF Treaty. The R-12s are most famous for being the missiles that were involved in the Cuban Missile Crisis. Now these coins were handed out as a symbol of friendship to Western dignitaries and even the media during the period of Glasnost. Now some websites claim these are made out of aluminum, which wouldn't be very bullet resistant, but I was ensured these are made out of a unique alloy of titanium and aluminum, or if you're British, titanium and aluminium. Now let's head out to the test site. Welcome back to Outfitter folks. Jeff and Officer Greg out here with you. Today was something completely different. And I know we say that a lot, but today, <laughs> today we've brought you, these are actual Soviet peace dollars. When I say Soviet, I don't mean just from Russia. These are 1988 Soviet peace dollars. Jeff's gonna show you a little close up on the tabletop so you can read it or not read it because it's written in uh, Russian, but they're- There's English too. They're labeled peace dollar. Jeff was sent five of them. I don't know what kind of piece you're gonna buy for five peace dollars, but you can get these actual Soviet era peace dollars on eBay. And um, we were given five of these things. We're gonna shoot them with different caliber of pistol rounds. We're gonna start out with 22, work our way up through nine millimeter, 40 caliber, 7.5 Bruno and uh, 45 ACP. Um, I will tell you though that they're, yeah, they're evidently made out of pieces of uh, Russian missiles. Yes. So it's a Soviet peace committee How'd that, work out? Peace. How'd that work out for you, Russia? <laughs> so we know what's going on over in Russia and Ukraine. Don't bother, you know, jamming up the comment section with all of that. I think you guys probably know where all of us stand on it. Let's just talk about these peace dollars and what they might stop. Okay, no one's going to be judging you by your accuracy, Greg. Don't oh, worry. 50 yards with a 22 pistol. That's pretty oh, That's hard. like 10, around 12 feet away. <laughs> Okay. Don't tell them the truth. Yeah. Go. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right. We're going to try. I don't know where it went. All right. Here we have the Kronos high-speed camera footage running at around 11,000 frames a second. We used a blob of Silly Putty to support the coin. The Silly Putty being a type of non-Newtonian fluid actually held up quite well. And so did the coin we learned? What was the first thing we learned, the Greg? The first thing we learned was that 22 carried this thing. It did not make a hole in it. That was actually kind of surprising. I predicted that it was going to go right through the 22. I did too. That's like, if it does, and then game over, you know? But it carried it quite a ways away. It went way down there. We, we found we, it 20 yards away and off to the right, so that was kind of crazy. Um, the other thing we learned is we are no longer going to be able to get this into the peace vending machine <laughs> to buy some peace chips. <laughs> That thing made a nice little dent. You can see it kind of twisted it around. We also learned to put a backstop behind it. So for round number two through five or whatever we got, we're gonna try and catch not only the bullet, that'll be interesting, but hopefully this will stop the coin so we don't have to go. Maybe, it might, so it, it's, it's better than what we had. I, I thought it would hit it and it would go like 10 feet. It went a long ways. We spent a long time looking for that thing. Yeah, it's like Easter's out here. Yeah. Russian Easter's, Soviet Easter. But kind of kind of amazed that thing did not. Uh, no, what's did not next? Nine millimeter? Uh, yeah, we're gonna walk up to nine millimeter and try it. I wish we had like thirty-eight special or something, but the band or the round? Well, both, man. <laughs> we got some air supply. <laughs> All right, nine millimeter. Let's do it. Here we go nine millimeter. Well, that one didn't go very far. Hit the edge of it. Now one thing to note here is the weight of the bullet is about the same as the weight of the coin, but the impact was still strong enough to do significant damage to the coin. 
Well, I hit low in the silly putty, Jeff tells me, which means it went through the six o'clock uh, down at the bottom of the coin. It ripped it, but it did not punch a hole through it. It could be because we hit it right on the edge. So I think what we need to do is mount that thing back in there and see if we can't get a 9 millimeter to go through. I should have brought a hammer to flatten it back out. That would take all the fun out of it. Oh, okay. So, Instead of the silly putty. I... Which was silly. Well, yeah. <laughs> We're just going to put it up in this little high-tech coin holder, little table here. Wow. See if we can't get a 9 millimeter round. Did you, like, re did you print that in your truck just now? Yeah, I did. <laughs> I ordered it up real quick from the uh, from Paul Harrell's Amazon affiliate. <laughs> Does he have one? No. Oh, okay. Oh, maybe he does. I don't watch. I don't think around. he has a Patreon or anything. Uh, he's Come very, on, Paul. He's very, very serious individual. Yeah, he's right. very serious. Nine millimeter. Two nine millimeter. Titanium. Okay, I'm ready. We decided to try another shot with the nine millimeter, and the results were very similar. And the bullet this time just finished tearing the coin in half. We never found any of these pieces. We have no idea where they went. Maybe we'll find them someday though. 45 ACP LU. Okay. All right, let's see if we can hit it. The 45 ACP bullet is considerably heavier than the coin, but a lot slower than the 9mm. Interesting results there. So the HK USP, we fired a 45 caliber round, it hit about 2 o'clock on this coin, dented it, spun it around really, really fast, but it did not punch through, at least not on the edge there. So. Oh, you want to try an experiment? Because right now everyone's like, well, you got to strap it down, right? You got to oh, strap yeah. it down. Yeah, if you'd strapped it down, the bullet would have gone right through. Let's, let's see what it. Let's, All right. let's put, back it up with something. I'm not sure. We'll I'll have to tape, think about this. I'll tape it to a piece of Kevlar or something so we yeah, can. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I, I should mention too, the 9mm, we, we fired it the first time and it dented it, ripped it. We fired it a second time to try to get it to go through the center. We lost a damn coin. Uh, we don't know where it went. We have tried, we've tracked it. We'll whole... find it like a month from now though. Yeah, but it'll be worth more. Yeah. It disappeared faster than the value of your Bitcoin right now. So um... <laughs> anyway, we don't know where the nine millimeter is. If we stumble across it, we're gonna show you on camera. But yeah, that uh, 45, a big slow fat round, punched into it, spun it, but uh, bent the crap out of it. This is not also gonna go into a, a, a piece laundry, a piece washing machine anytime soon. <laughs> But let's try and strap it down and see if that doesn't uh, yeah, I, I, help the want Yeah, we want to show you real physics here. Oh, Does that God. matter or not? I mean, are we actually showing real physics now? Maybe. I didn't realize this was actually. We always learn something. Education. We do, but that it's. That way we can refer people back to this. You know, it's like, oh, you got to strap down that lead plate. I got some comments saying we should have strapped down strap the lead, down lead, lead plate. plate. Yeah, yeah 32 makes, pound lead plate. Yep. Makes a lot of sense. It's perfect. It's just science. Yeah. All right, let's strap it down. Okay, what's our, what are we gonna do here? Jeff caught me sciencing over here. So we've always had people say that if we don't strap our targets down, they're not getting the full ballistic effect. That it, makes it, no sense Well, it makes sense if you're punching a, a balloon in the air with your fist. Yes, but a but when you're, we're talking about the speed of a bullet and a ner how, way the way inertia works and everything. Right, the inertia and stuff. So. Okay, if so we... I've, I've scotch taped this Russian bullet. We've gone international here. Russian coin. Scotch tape on a Russian coin. We're going to try and put another 45 slug right here and see if we can't punch a hole through it because it's strapped down. It's strapped down. Now we have Kevlar behind it, Ooh. which now you, now you have to ask yourself, well, How do you, you know, know is, it, is, it, is it being stopped because of the Kevlar behind it? Because, you know, if we put it against a... a a piece of wood, you know, you, have, you, know, you got a wood of, backing it up, you know? That's a lot of questions I'm asking myself, Jeff. Yeah, so this... And I don't know the answers to these, so I wouldn't even know what to tell myself. Okay, let's see what let's happens. It. It, it might learn something here. Yeah. Oh, it went flying. I saw where it landed.
Now that we have it backed up with Kevlar, we have a little more support on the coin and we have a lot more damage this time. All right, so before we get anywhere, look at that 45 slug right there. Found that in the vest. And about 10 or 15 feet behind the table, we found this. It caught it right in the center like a little catcher's mitt. It strapped down or loose. It did not punch through. Yeah, but now now we have to... Are you budding science? No, no, no. All right. I'm, I, I just want to... How do we tell if this did more damage than that or you know had more energy? By backing it up with Kevlar, you know, it offered, you know, more resistance and everything. I think you're posing questions that no one wants to answer. Well, this is a peace dollar, Jeff. Oh, and okay. And it's wrinkled to hell. Well, this, okay, it gives you an idea. Maybe having the, you know, the Kevlar behind it. Dang it. <laughs> Come on, Colonel Clink. <laughs> Looks like some kind of Bond villain. <laughs> I think what we need to do is step it up. We've got 40 caliber and the big daddy of them all that has to punch through this is the 7.5 millimeter Berno around, the PSD round. Yep. Let's give it a try. Okay, we tried to get scientific. We tried to answer so the sick. questions that might pop up. I guess. Often questions will pop up years later. It's like, oh, come you didn't do this. It's like, well, this isn't a live stream, first of Most all. Most of the questions that pop up years later are, why are you guys out there in the middle of nowhere shooting coins with a pistol? Oh, well, yeah. you got nothing better to do. It's all science, though. I've got a whole uh, table full of uh, steaming beakers over here, <laughs> full of all kinds of colored liquids, and we've been pouring them back and forth. So. Okay, let's go with the 40. Let's People like it. that 40 for some reason. Oh, 40 caliber has a Glock 22. Not sure where it's going to hit. Okay, I'm ready when you are. All right, I'm not sure I'm ready, but here we go. I can't see the coin go anywhere. Hopefully it's in the vest. I know. But here we go. Now I realize we're not being super scientific here, but at least we can compare this shot to the 45 ACP. As we did the test, we were kind of learning and evolving on how to do this properly. Okay, so we found the uh, hot bullet. That's the evidence that it was the right one. It punched the coin right back into the vest. We found the coin inside the, the carrier of the vest. So it hit this uh, hit this coin about 12 o'clock. Still pretty pretty much in the center of the center-ish of the coin. It ripped it. It did not punch a hole through that. That was a hollow point, by the way. It didn't punch a hole through it, but it ripped it. And then you can see the little Kevlar, or the not actually Kevlar fibers, but the the black carrier stuck to the back of it. So you've ah. got you've got what we would describe as a little gash with black hairs on it. <laughs> That's right. You're That's giving right. people bad ideas. It's science. You asked for science, you got science. Okay. There's the gash, the hairy gash. <laughs> All right, I'm actually kind of surprised though because uh, 40 caliber still hasn't really punched a nice hole in there and I predicted every one of these would be. Uh, yeah, I thought 22 would go through it. You know which one will go through it. 7.5 Burno. Burno. It'll okay. go right through this you and wanna, the vest. Let's do that one next. Let's do it. Did you, did you bring 10 millimeter? I didn't. Oh, okay. Because that's, I, I can see the comments now. The comments now. 10 millimeter. 10 millimeter. 40 cover. Blah, 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 blah. Weak. I have a feeling 10 millimeter would have been like this, but maybe, maybe toward a bigger gash. I don't know. Nothing seems to be punching a hole right through this. So. Yeah. Why is that? We will see. Give us your opinions in the comments section while you look at this gash. Oh, great. Okay, Berno, 7.5 millimeter. I'm thinking this will go through the coin, through the vest. E maybe. Okay, I'm ready. Through the dirt berm <laughs> and through the next county. Here we go. Oh, oh I saw some dirt kick up behind you. Yeah. Let's okay. go. Now, if someone showed me this clip, I would mistakenly identify that as a rifle impact. The bullet velocity of an FK Burno is about 25% faster than the hottest 44 Magnum load. Okay. So here's one of the 7.5 millimeter rounds. If you want to get in and close, get in real close, boy. It is a, this is what they call their nose discarding round. It's just a hollow point, but it's designed to shed all of the little copper petals up front and leave you with a little copper core designed for penetration. So if you're out hunting pig or bear or something with a heavy skull or hide, this is your penetrating round here. FK Burno right there. 
pretty cool little round. It's getting the same ballistics, they say, that a uh, short AK-47 pistol is getting. I believe it. Uh, the more I see it, the yeah. more I believe it, man. We've seen these things between 1,600 and 2,000 feet per second. They fly really flat at distance, and as you can tell, they punch way harder than a pistol. It's practically like having a rifle in your hand. So, so what did we learn? If you want to shoot down a Russian missile, you better get an FK Bruner. Yeah, I use a check uh, a check gun to shoot down a Russian missile, but only if you have Scotch tape. <laughs> well, that's about as international as we can get with you. So, <laughs> look at that. Wow, it's a sculpture. It's practically art. Yeah. All right, well, I, I guess that's it. That's about all we got for it. It's all the sciencing we can do in one stop without, uh, without there'll, getting There'll be license. lots of uh, room for comments saying how we did it wrong and we, uh, how come you didn't tape the 9 millimeter? you know. Your 40 caliber round, you was a hollow point. The rest of them were hardball. How come you didn't use 10 millimeter? You should have tried 9 by 19 Dylan. <laughs> See, we don't have a gun store, so we only can bring out the stuff we own. We don't have every type of bullet for every gun and <laughs> every gun ever made. <laughs> we do have a lot. But, it's just, uh, we, we give you some samples of different things, and then you can use your imagination what the gun you have at home will kids do. Kids don't have an imagination anymore, Jeff. They have internet. Anyway, this was, uh, it was a fun little test. It actually kind of surprised us what happened and uh, I predicted that every single round was going to go right I thought this. the 22 was going to go through it and that was it you know yeah and be so, like a 30 second video well it was very surprising for even us here the shooters we were surprised which should make it sort of interesting for you because just going to edit out all the slow stuff where we're out here walking for miles looking for uh, coins we still haven't found the nine millimeter coin I don't know <laughs> it's shiny it's kind of big and it's there's Oh, I'm shiny. If you see it, let too. us know. You see it? There. I'm pretty sure it went off. Looking at the high speed, it went off this way. Yeah, we'll pan your camera over there. They'll tell you exactly where it is. And yeah, see. if we had a metal detector, we'd, or, we could spend the next two days looking for it. Or a quarter mile uh, tarp. tarp. Yeah, a giant tarp. Anyway, we had a lot of fun bringing this one to you. <laughs> Something a little bit different than shotgun slugs. So uh, let us know what you think down in the comment section. And we thank you for stopping by. And check out the guy's uh, eBay store if you, yeah. if you want to buy one of these. And maybe I'll, let's see, I don't know what I'm thinking. Uh, give them away. Uh, what am I going to do with them? You know, maybe you got, somebody on Patreon wants them. Yeah, you got five, no, four, because we can't find the nine millimeter coin. I know. You got four damaged coins, and this one is extra badass. That one, it is. That's, that a, that's a special. A yeah. So, anyway, thanks for stopping by, and we hope you like this. And uh, I don't know. See you on the next video. What am I supposed to say here? I don't know. It's a Glass goodbye. Ghost. You say titanium.